Yo, what's going on everybody, this is Mystical. Today, I'm bringing you a video that a lot of people asked for. I didn't know people wanted it, but this is just a breakdown of strategy and goals for each map in BG Blitz. So this might be a longer video than normal, but hopefully there's enough information that's pretty helpful for if you're playing most or mostly playing or even casually playing BG Blitz. So I'm gonna go through every single map, give the strategy, what I do normally when I'm playing that map. And I'll try to give some general tips as well, not just Mistweaver or Healy specific. I'm just gonna try to do the overall strategy and how to help your team win the game. I want to start this video with the one map that caused this video, and that is Eye of the Storm. I have lost and won this map because people don't understand it. All right, so the first thing you need to know is the first one to fit, first team to 1500 wins the game, right? There are four nodes on this map but only two of them are available at a time. At the start of the game, those two nodes are Draenei Ruins and Fell Reaver. Those are the two nodes every single game. It doesn't change at all, all right? So you should always have one person going to each of those nodes. And the strategy for this, for this map, right, is one person caps Fell Reaver, on your team, right? And then the other team maybe caps Draenei Ruins, right? If you're Horde, you're gonna cap Fell Reaver. Other team caps Draenei Ruins. And then seven people go mid. The reason why you want to get mid is because when you get the, if you win and you get the flag, you essentially win the game. The reason for that is when you're holding the flag, you're getting stacks so that you can't move as fast and it reduces healing on you. Now, why that's important is because if you grab the flag and you bring it to Fell Reaver, right? And that flag is at 10 stacks, and the other team comes over to Fell Reaver and tries and gets that flag. Well, now they just picked up the flag and it has 10 stacks and they cannot get away. They have no movement speed, right? So you just kill them. And then the next person on the team tries to get the flag. And guess what? You kill that person too. There is literally no way that they sh anyone should be able to win if you get the flag and bring it to your base. The only way would be if they have a death knight on the other team and they grip it into, into the cap. The other major thing okay, that this is what has caused me to lose this map, is when you cap the flag or the other team caps the flag, those bases swap, right? So if you owned Fell Reaver as Horde and the other team had Draenei Ruins and someone caps the flag, you, no, no team controls their nodes and it swaps. So if you're Alliance, it'll go to Mage Tower and if you're Horde, it'll go to Blood Elf Tower and you have to recap those towers. And that's why I've lost because you, no one controls anything. And there is a chance that they could actually cap two nodes as well. And yes, having two nodes is obviously much better. But, you know, five capping on a Wrathy base is also nice, right? But that's not realistically, especially at high more, it's more than likely not going to happen. So keep that in mind. If you own a base you, and it swaps over, no one controls any base. You have to go recap it. So that's why I've lost games. Do not cap the flag if you own two bases because you'll no longer own either base. But yeah, that is a strategy. The strategy is to have one person cap whichever tower is available, go mid, get the flag, hold that flag until about, I think it's 1350, I believe. And then you just you just cap it and win. That's that's pretty much it. It's It's a very, it feels like a cheesy way to win. It is what it is. But I still, it's just, I think it's the best way to do it. Temple of Komogu is my favorite map in all Battlegrounds and BG Blitz. So I love this. Um, the first thing you want to know is you want to get to 1500 victory points to win. If you kill a player with your orb, you get victory points. And the goal here is to just pick up the orbs. And please, pick up the orbs. And you are not obligated to drop mid with them. That's like the biggest thing that I've noticed when doing BG Blitz, especially at lower MMR. You do not need to pick up an orb. Actually, I encourage you not to pick, an, pick up an orb and then go mid. You don't have to do that. I promise. I have gotten 600, 700 victory points for my team on a Mistweaver by picking up the orb whenever it drops and just standing on the outside of middle and healing my team, uh, he healing the team's mid fight uh, from outside the ring. You cannot LOS in mid. You, the Markmanship Hunters, the Warlocks, the Dev Evokers, every, the Mages, they love that. You know, they love when people when orbs drop mid because it's so easy to kill them. Just stand around the outside, pick up an orb, stand around the outside, and then just kite. That's all you have to do. Especially, it's even better if your whole team does that too because then you're sticking with your whole team. They fight in, if, especially if the other team is trickling in one at a time, you can easily just kill them, right? So pick up an orb, always... 
stay around the outside. You do not want to drop mid if you have an orb, in my opinion, especially if you're a melee, just pick up the orb. Ideally, range pick up the orb, and you will get eight points per tick with the orb when you're standing on the uh, the middle. You're getting six points per tick when you're standing on the outside, so you're not actually doing that much. You're really not doing that much by dropping mid with the orb. You're doing yourself, you're going to die, and you're going to give the other team points when, if, when you die <laughs> in the middle, so try not to do that. The other biggest part about this map is where you actually die, and it's more mostly geared towards rated battlegrounds not mostly towards bg blitz because you res faster but still it is good to know so if you die on the right side of the map you're going to res on the left side of the map and if you die on the left side of the map you're going to res on the right side of the map it's not really that important for bg blitz again because you res so fast but just keep that in mind if most of your team is on the right side of the map you want to die on the left side of the map so you res on the right side and res where your team is that's pretty much it it's very important to understand it's actually really important to rate a battlegrounds because you want to be able to regroup with your team as fast as possible and make sure that you know you can help with the team fight or heal if you have to next up is silver shard mines and this one is actually somewhat confusing because there's actually there's a lot of nuanced things that you can do so the first basic strategy is it doesn't matter if you're horde or reliance you want to team fight mid at the start. Now, if you are alliance, you're gonna have someone go top cart, and if you're horde, you're gonna have someone go middle cart. I think technically, because the middle tar middle cart does cap first, there is some argument where you want to go mid, but the the issue is mid is so far away from lava, and lava consistently caps faster than mid. It just depends on your team strategy. If you are a stealthy, if you are a hunter, rogue, a druid if you're a rep Halley, i know they don't have stealth but i'm just saying if you're a rep Halley, anything tanky with good burst damage or a stealthy you will more than likely be playing off cards now what off cards are is the main card is lava right let's just pretend you know lava is the main card for this map the off cards is everything else right so off cards is mid and top you want to ideally cap lava as many times as possible. It caps the fastest and you want that uh, ASAP. Now the goal of this is obviously get to 1500 resources just like the other maps. And yeah, you're just trying to control as many cards as possible. If you cap lava and a, the mid card is about halfway to being capped, I would say go mid get that mid and then go back to lava top i feel like most of the time is a bait even though it is free points if you can get the ninja or if they don't have many stealthies yes 100 percent go for it especially if your team is like looking a little desperate you know try and go for it now the nuance thing is if you're not winning lava or your your team is not like a i don't know a team fight team or whatever you can swap where the tracks on lava cart and there are teams that have done this i've seen it. it it works really well so you can make it so the lava cart instead of going straight to lava it actually goes top and it takes longer to cap which means it's not getting as many points as if you were going to keep uh capping mid so keep that in mind that there are options if your team isn't really good at team fighting you you know that's fine too the reason i also said in one of my latest videos is if you do not die in the cart because the opposing team will immediately get a three tick advantage and this is something i learned actually from cherry who is an insane rbger and bg blitz player and she shows i will link a clip in the description about what that is but you try not to die in the cart try and die near it but not in it and then obviously fight in the circle please fight in the circle and then if a cart new cart spawns just tag it right those ticks of of resources is really important they add up too so please keep that in mind you always want to try your best to just get as many resources as possible as far as healing goes it's a really straightforward map you're healing lava hopefully you win and then you fight mid try to heal that and then go back to lava and that's what you do in all game mid lava mid lava you're off card to hopefully trying to fight for top as well trying to get two people probably trying to get top or mid if it's just mostly a team fight at lava but yeah that's that's pretty much it it's pretty it's fairly straightforward but there are some things you can do to help your team if you are kind of struggling in the team fight Arathi Basin, the goal is to get to 1,500 resources before the other team does. It's pretty simple. There are five bases in this map, and it takes four seconds to cap a node. So that's different than RBGs. It's a lot shorter time. And the unique thing about BG Blitz is that after 30 seconds where you control the base, it becomes immune. So the enemy team cannot cap the flag that you owned 
after 30 seconds for 45 seconds. So you have 45 seconds where you could actually leave that base and I encourage you to leave that base and go help somewhere else and rotate somewhere else if there's other, you know, other bases that are being fought at or if you're going to even, I would also uh, try to 1v1 people as well. If you have a talent, not just Mistweaver, Mistweaver a Song of Chi-G and Leg Sweep that allows them to 1v1 somebody in Kappa Flag. But if you're like a hunter and you're freezing trap, you could try to 1v1 somebody at a base when, you know, it's not fully capped over yet you could try to sneak it in and cap it so just keep that in mind cap the base after 30 seconds you own that base for 45 seconds and you can completely leave and then just be be aware that you kind of want to also come back right you want to you want to come back to your base and recap it especially if there's no one there but uh as far as uh Rathi basically goes and to an extent deep wind gorge because they're basically the same map you always want to keep capping flags and rotating as much as possible uh i would also suggest don't stay at one base for too long if there's a team fight going on i would say at the start you're going to have if you're horde someone's going to cap farm if you're alliance someone's going to cap stables from there it's normally a 1v1 between rogues or hunters or boomies at mine so it's normally a 1v1 down there and then that leaves what six people to go somewhere so normally it's 2v2 at blacksmith 4v4 at lumber mill and anyone who has knocks i would say go to lumber mill miss weaver has knocks boomies ellies even shadow priest or priest in general with mind control anything like that that can get them off the edge i would say go lumber mill and then a healer and like a melee go blacksmith just to spin it until hopefully your team can get lumber mill so that is the strategy on the rathi basin essentially just trying to control normally three bases if your team can get the one for at mines even once that's ideal that would be amazing but normally it's just a, trying to get through like three main nodes blacks with lumber mill and then either stables or farm and rotating whenever your node finally caps over and you have 45 seconds to kind of rotate around the map Deep Wind Gorge, very similar to Arathi Basin. The goal is to get to 1,500 resources. There are five nodes on this map, just like Arathi Basin. And again, it takes four seconds to cap the flag. And after 30 seconds, you control that base for 45 seconds. So that's very that's a very important concept. I actually thoroughly enjoy it much more than like random or rated battlegrounds. I think this is much better. And so that allows you to rotate. Now, the strategy on this is, is again, very similar. So if you are... Um, Alliance, you're going to have so many cap shrine and farm. If you're horde, you're going to have so many cap ruins and quarry. And then normally it's a 6v6 at market, depending on the comp. Sometimes some people will send a few people to spin market, which is the mid middle node, and then try to get quarry quickly before it caps. That doesn't, I've never, it doesn't really happen. So normally the first initial team fight is one person at, you know, cap in the side bases, and then it's just a 6v6 in, in mid, in market, trying to get the the middle base now if you team wipes it's okay the good thing about battleground blitz and the way that the nodes work is it's actually not easy but you can come back so if your team wipes normally you're going to try to recap your the two that you started with so either shrine farm quarry or ruins and then try to you know send your stealthies off to either the, the opposing base so for alliance and we cap our shrine and farm we kind of want our stealth because stealth is insane in rbgs because they have no idea where you are um we want people going to quarry or ruins trying to just poke around trying to ninja if you can get a ninja and then re get reinforcements there maybe you can get market so it's always a constant rotation and similar to Rathi Basin as well try not to stay too long at a base it's I feel like it's a trap where you know you're 2v2ing at shrine and now your team is down two people the other team is sure is down two people but then you have four bases across six people it just feels like the numbers start to I think it's a really big map it's it's you know a lot of not too many people for it so just keep that in mind if you're starting to lose that 2v2, I would just peel out. Maybe you're better off somewhere else, especially as a healer. You kind of want to heal, obviously, the team fight. So you, you, the deep, it's kind of the DPS's job to go get a base. But always always be weary of stealths, right? Always be clicking battleground enemies. Make sure that you are... You can catch a ghost. I've catch, caught ghosts plenty of times. You see a rogue hitting farm, and you saw him, he capped quarry, but... There's no other stealthy, so and no one else is there. They're obviously ghosting it. So keep that in mind. And then sometimes market can become like a stalemate. So just be careful. Maybe you have some peel out of, of market as well. It just depends on the situation. But the beauty about this map in Arathi Basin is once you cap the flag and you control it, you can rotate, which is fantastic. Just make sure you get back to the base as well uh, before it caps over.
Battle for Gilneas is similar to Arathi Basin, but when you cap a flag, you don't actually, it's, it doesn't become immune. It is completely up to whoever owns that base. So the normal strategy for this is to have Alliance, Cap, Lighthouse, Horde, Cap, Mines, and then the other seven people just go Waterworks and team fight it out. Sometimes, it obviously depends on the comp that you have, but sometimes if their other team has like a Boomy Rogue or like a Hunter Rogue, Hunter Boomy, one of them will Cap, Mines, or Lighthouse and then try to go get either mines or lighthouse depending on what faction they are that is a strategy i've seen sometimes but be careful because if that does happen you can always catch the ghost if you're always paying attention to battleground enemies always clicking on whoever's stealth you can kind of catch the the ghost rather quickly just because there's only eight people on each team so the normal strategy is to have one person cap you know their respective node either mines or lighthouse and then just duke it out at waterworks the better the better team fight normally wins now if you don't have a team fight comp right if you don't have the affliction warlocks or the boomies or like the marksmanship hunters and you have like the main ages and you, the rogues maybe then yeah you're probably going to want to opt for going for that first strategy where you need to rely on trying to get the base that's already capped that's what you're trying to do you're trying to ninja base uh, as quickly as possible and then try to reinforce it by spinning the flag as long as you can sometimes it's unlucky right you don't get the team fight maps or you don't get the team fight comp but most of the time you can kind of find a way to win the team fight in that 7v7 at waterworks All right, Twin Peaks is a, just a capture the flag map. So it's a 12 minute timer and you just have to, if you win, with, if you have the most caps of the game or if you get to three. So if you get the three flag, win, flag caps or if you have the most caps at the end, you win. If it's a tie, it goes to whoever captured the flag last. So if it's, you know, if the score is two to two, whoever captured the last to get to two wins the game. Uh, that's very important. And this map, I mean, the strategy really is obviously if you have a Mistweaver or a Prez, you want them flag carrying help them get across the map when you can and then your team fighting in mid at the start but ideally you have a team set up for offense and defense so ideally right if you have a i'm a misweaver right so if i'm fly carrying hopefully i have a rogue or warrior one of them uh, would be really nice to help me kind of just stay alive while i'm in my base or trying to get to my base the rogues are really good appealing the warriors are really good appealing they have intervene as well so and they have fear so they have a lot of good tools Outside of that, you better have, you can have one, you can maybe have one more on defense, but you better have five or six people pushing out. Like you need an offense. Like it's, I see this at lower Mars too, as well too. Killing people in mid is not helping. Like it, it's just not, you might be slowing them, which is nice, but you need an offense to kill the enemy flag carrier. So keep that in mind. Try to have, you know, if there's a hunter, they're definitely going to be offense. Anything, really anything. Anything that's not helping your flag carrier should just be on offense killing the EFC as soon as they cap pick up the flag. That is just from what I've seen, the best way to to kind of help with that, and you know, a, t a Twin Peaks is fairly much easier than Warsaw Gulch because you know the Z axis. There aren't multiple stories. There's just like one small Z axis right in in the bases, which is not hard to get to. So it's very easy to connect to the enemy flag carrier. So again, nothing too crazy about this map. Have us have an offense, have a defense, have a flag carrier, and then whoever's not on defense. Kill the kill the enemy flag carrier. That's that's pretty much it. There's nothing else insane about this map. Now, if your flag carrier, right, and let's just say I'm a misweaver and I died and I'm having trouble getting out of the graveyard because someone stopped me from getting the flag, you need to designate somebody to pick up the flag for me and and help me, right? So if I if we have a rogue or a boomy on our team, I would love it if they if I was having trouble getting to the flag, I would love if they went to go get the flag for me. That way I don't need to cross the map be, while being slowed using all my mobility. Instead, they bring it to me. We CC the rogue or the, you know, whoever's trying to slow me and then swap it and then I get it and then I have all my mobility to get across only half the map. So keep that in mind. And then likewise, if you kill the enemy flag carrier, someone better be at the graveyard slowing the flag carrier right so if you kill let's just say i cap it right because we killed the enemy flag carrier i there a rogue a death knight or a warlock warlocks have that curse of exhaust that makes me go crazy but like death knight or rogue one of the or hunter right because they have concussive shot one of those three better be at that graveyard as fast as possible trying to slow the flag carrier that way just to make it as hard as possible force them to use maybe the trinket their mobility anything literally anything to make it so when they get the flag they have less tools to use so 
keep that in mind. Try to kill the enemy flag carrier, but also try to slow them and make it very difficult for them to get back once they're dead. Same strategy for worse on Gulch, right? Uh, first to three caps wins. If you tie, whoever capped the flag last wins. The only time you, you the only time you could ever tie in this or Twin Peaks is if the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. That's the only way you tie. And it's the same thing, same strat. You want an offense, you want defense, you want a flag carrier. If you're flag carrying, right? If you're a misweaver, prez, you want to have either a rogue or warrior with you. You could have maybe maybe it's pushing it a second dps if you really want to or if you're really scared that's fine you can go with like a warlock or something like that but everyone else should be committing to killing the enemy flag carrier asap um as soon as they pick up a flag people should just turn around and just start killing them and yes very similar to twin peaks just keep that strategy try to if you're flag carrying right if you're a miss we have a whole video on how to flag carry but just try to keep trying to port if you're trying to kill the enemy flag carrier try to force their cooldowns their mobility their train it and then hopefully if you have a rogue or something with a stun like a feral or you know mighty bash from a druid you could just kill them in that stun always try to cc healers when you're going for the kill but that is worse than gulch very similar to twin peaks finally deep hall ravine now this is the newest battleground in the pool and so i as far as strategy goes i'm going to tell you what i've seen and what, what has worked, right? So this is the newest battleground, first of 1,500 wins. And from my point of view, in BG Blitz, you win, you, you get, not win, but you get so far ahead when you when you control both cards. So both the cards go through mid, but they also spawn, and it takes a really long time for these cards to even get to mid. So in my opinion, straight off the rip, straight off from like, as soon as the gates open, I would use the upper deck to go across the map and go control the enemy enemy cart. That way you have both carts. And I would do that with two or three people. You don't need to team fight mid instantly. I think middle gives 200 points, but the carts, if you own both carts, you get like 500 or 600. Like you're getting, you own the carts, so you get 100 points for when it caps. And then you get four points per tick if you own one. And if you own two, you get nine points per tick. It's just, it's just insane. So ideally you're controlling both carts. Mid, it would be nice, right? But it'd be a nice extra thing to have, but Obviously, you can. I don't know if you can have both. That, that'd be rough for the other team. <laughs> You'd be dominating the other team if you got both carts and mid. But I would always prioritize getting both carts. And then if you can get mid or if you only own one cart, then fight mid once the carts are near mid. So that's the strategy that I've seen. Always try to go for both, especially right when they cap. It's like the best time to get it, right? So after you cap, they, they cap and then they respawn on top of the hills for you know both Alliance and Horde. So I would, as, as soon as they're about to cap i would start going towards wherever the opposing cart spawns and i would go control it try to get control of it because if you can control the both cards for even if until they just get to mid that's like 300 or 400 points and then you could just control one and cap it and then fight for mid but always try to prioritize getting two cards i think in in this map I, in my opinion finally some general tips just for people that are doing battlegrounds or bg blitz one Remember to loot dead bodies. It is very important when you kill somebody, their body stays behind and you can loot it. What this does is this makes it so the enemy that you just killed cannot go from the graveyard and body res is what they call it. Body res, which is if you didn't loot their body, they could just go to wherever they died and respawn. You don't want that to happen. You want them to res at the graveyard because then they can position when they're dead. So always remember to loot bodies. Two, in BG Blitz, there are shadow, shadow sight everywhere that allows you to see stealth. Right, you can you can literally see people in stealth. So it has every base, right? Other Rathay base in Deepen Gorge, and Battle for Gilneas, all of them. So you can see in stealth. And so if you ever have to sit a base, or if you just you know if you're just at a base, you want to know where the stealth is, see if they're ghosting, pick one up, see where they are. You can see every single person. And then also remember to drink. Right, drinking is important, especially if it's in those long team fights like I the Storm or uh, Battle for Gilneas. You're going to have long team fights, so just always remember to drink if you're a healer. If you are a warlock or a monk on Battle for Gilneas, remember you can put your port in the houses so that teams can't really kill you. But the most important thing I'm going to leave you off with is please spin the flag. 
Just spin the flag. That is like the most important thing. Battleground Blitz is much faster than Raid of Battlegrounds. It is much easier to fall behind than in the normal battleground. So if you start to lose a base, spin as much as you can. Arathi base in Deep Wind Gorge. Let's, even if you're losing the team fight, right? It's fine. I mean, it's fine. Just spin as long as possible. Every second counts. I have had battle battle battleground blitz games come down to seconds of just if you if someone didn't spin we would have lost right so just spin even if you're losing if you're a monk use rob if you're using thunderous focus t as well you can use cracking j lightning to knock them spinning crane kick anything if you're a warrior spin if you know blade storm i don't know how warriors work but just spin the flag as much as you can that's like the most important thing just make it so it gives your team a better chance at winning and those are the general tips i have and of course if you have any suggestions for strategies for anything please Put it in the comments below. I am by no stretch of the matter an insane Battleground Blitz player. I just happen to play it a lot. And I've seen, I play at low MMR. I play at a higher MMR. So please, like if you have any strategies, please, please, please put it in the comments. We, we want to share tips here. So that is it for me. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. Hopefully this is helpful for anyone who might have been struggling or maybe confused on how maps work. But that is it for me. Hope everyone's a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.